Hello everyone and welcome to the Brain Boost channel. So today we're going to be looking at the Baltimore scheme of viral genome classification. So let's just jump right into the video. Okay, so this is just an overview of what we're going to be looking at today. So here we have seven groups that we're going to start tackling individually in a bit. I just want to give a quick overview uh, and a brief explanation of each one and a few points that we should have an understanding of before we get into the depth. So here we have group one, which is double-stranded DNA, group two, which is single-stranded DNA, we have group three, which is double-stranded RNA, group four, which is plus single-stranded RNA, um, and if you notice something that that's basically just mRNA. Uh, we have group 5, which is negative single-stranded RNA. We have group 6, which is plus single-stranded RNA with a double-stranded DNA intermediate. And we have group 7, which is gapped double-stranded DNA. So basically, something that we should keep in mind is that the hosts translational machinery is it can only translate mRNA right so m this is why all of these groups in the schematic this is why they all point down towards this boxed mRNA because they all have to get here so mRNA is technically defined as the positive strand because that's what is uh, translated by ribosomes and to make a positive stranded RNA from DNA that has to be negative so when we're looking at RNA or DNA the complement of the plus strand is called the negative strand and vice versa so that means that plus strand plus single stranded RNA is technically just mRNA they're the same thing which is what I mentioned about group 4 here and so uh, basically, before we get into all the details about everything, the purpose of the virus is to basically make copies of its genome and package these genomes into virions so that they can go on and infect new hosts. So this means that all viruses have to make or express their genes as a functional mRNA, right? Um, so that they can direct, you know, host translational machinery to synthesize viral proteins, which is the end product here at the bottom. We want to get to mRNA to make viral proteins. And we want to duplicate our genome so that we can get that packaged and sent off to start infecting new hosts. So let's just start with the DNA viral genomes. So that's groups 1, 2, and 7. Um, and before we get into the DNA genomes, I just want you guys to remember that when we're looking at viral DNA genomes, all DNA viruses have to go to double-stranded DNA. So group 1 is already double-stranded DNA, so that can be left as is before we get to the mRNA. Group 2 is single-stranded DNA, so it has to become double-stranded first before we can start working with it and messing around. And the same goes for group 7. It's gapped double-stranded DNA. So we have to fill that gap in first before we have a functional um, double-stranded DNA that we can mess around with to get to mRNA. So we're going to start with group 1, which is our double-stranded DNA genome. And we're only really going to focus on figure A. All the other figures here are just images of other examples that have this genome type, but we're only looking at figure A for the most part. So in this case of double-stranded DNA, there is a limited coding capacity here. So, you know, some smaller genomes, they don't necessarily have space to encode a polymerase. So they're going to depend, or the virus is depending on the host's polymerase to produce the mRNA and to do all the work for it. So 
in this case, when we're starting with double-stranded DNA and we're going to produce an mRNA, we're relying on the host's DNA-dependent RNA polymerase. Uh, this is kind of a little bit of a trick. You're going to see it pop up later in the video as well. But essentially the name of the polymerase is kind of based on what your starting point is and what you're going to. So we're starting with double-stranded DNA and we're trying to make RNA. We're going from DNA to RNA. So this polymerase is DNA-dependent RNA polymerase. Uh, so that's kind of how the naming works here. And we'll get into that a bit later. But that's how we get to the mRNA, and that's going to be our viral protein, like we mentioned earlier. The other objective we said of a virus in this case is to duplicate or replicate its genome so that that duplication could be sent off for encapsidation and infection of new hosts because the virus just wants to infect and spread and work fast, right? So that's what it's doing. That's what it's coming to do. Make an mRNA to become viral protein and then uh, replicate its genome for encapsidation. So if we look at figure B here, polyomaviridae, this genome is very small. So as you can see, it doesn't really have, it has limited coding capacity here. It can't encode its own polymerase, which is why it's gonna rely on the host. Another thing I want you to keep in mind is these are DNA genomes that we're looking at right now, so that's another reason why they can rely on the host, because host machinery is already built to work with DNA. When we look at RNA genomes a bit later, you'll notice that they do a whole different thing. They use their own polymerases because they can't rely on the host, because RNA is very foreign to the host. So this is group two. This is single-stranded DNA genome. Uh, so for this example, we are going to once again look at figure A and we start off with a single strand um, and we need DNA synthesis to get to our double-stranded DNA before we can produce an mRNA, right? So once again, we're exploiting the host's DNA polymerase uh, DNA-dependent RNA polymerase to get to the mRNA production, which is going to be go off and become the viral protein in the f after future steps. And then this double-stranded DNA is the template for the duplication of the genome to get back to our single strand, and that's going to be sent off for encapsidation. So group two is relatively simple here. Moving on to our final group for the DNA viral genomes. This is group seven, gapped double-stranded DNA. So when we're starting with gapped double-stranded DNA, this gap must first be filled so that we can generate a completed double-stranded DNA molecule from which we can generate an mRNA strand. So that's the first step here. We're trying to get this gap filled and that is done in the nucleus. So now we have a fully formed double-stranded DNA, and from there we can generate our mRNA, which we've seen before, and that's going to be the path going rightwards. So the boxed um, strand, that's our mRNA, which is going to go on to be the viral protein and, you know, um, keep going on from there. So then going leftwards, this is where we're duplicating our genome. So from... Um, double-stranded DNA, um, it makes an, MR, an RNA that's basically like the mRNA because it's plus single-stranded RNA, and this is going to encode a reverse transcriptase, uh, which is going to take this RNA as a template and make the DNA strand. Um, so it is reverse transcriptase that's going to get us back to the gapped double-stranded DNA molecule from the RNA. So if you recall a little bit earlier in the video, I mentioned that we keep up with names of the polymerases based on what your starting point is and what the end point is. So we said DNA-dependent RNA polymerase was us going from DNA to RNA. So here, actually, when we're duplicating our genome, we're going from RNA to DNA, and we're using reverse transcriptase. But another name for the reverse transcriptase is the RNA-dependent DNA polymerase. So hopefully that makes sense.
Okay, so now that we've done the DNA genomes, we're going to move on to the RNA genomes. So just a quick refresher, we said that DNA genome, uh, viral DNA genomes exploit the host polymerase in order to, you know, duplicate their genome and to produce an mRNA from a DNA template. RNA viral genomes cannot necessarily do this, and this is because cells have no RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. So um, to replicate their genome or to make an mRNA from an RNA template, because the host doesn't have anything that goes from RNA to RNA. Whereas in DNA genomes, we the host is, you know, built to work with DNA, so it could obviously make an mRNA from a DNA template. So in this case, with RNA, since it can't do that, it needs to encode its own polymerase. All RNA viruses have to encode their own polymerases, which also means that they need space in their genomes in order to do this. So they do all of this through two strategies. The first one is the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, also known as the RDRP. So this is virally encoded. And I want you to recall that little rule I, I mentioned earlier where I said basically the naming of the polymerase is it's easier to keep track of the name and where it comes into play based on what our template is and what we're trying to go to. So if we're going from RNA to make an RNA, we're using the RDRP. If we were going from DNA, like in the DNA genomes, to make an mRNA, we're using a DNA-dependent RNA polymerase, okay? So now let's look at the second strategy, the uh, reverse transcriptase, known as the RT. So we just looked at reverse transcriptase um, in action with the gapped double-stranded DNA. And um, if you notice, it was used when we were going from an RNA to DNA. So you can kind of guess what another name for reverse transcriptase is, and that is RNA-dependent DNA polymerase, because it goes from RNA to DNA, like in the case of the gapped double-stranded DNA. Okay, so let's move on to our first RNA viral genome group, and this is group three. This is the double-stranded RNA viral genome. So we're only really going to pay attention to the left side, figure A. That's all we really need to focus on here. So we start off with a double-stranded RNA genome. And what, happen is, what happens here is that we get a uh, transcription of one of the RNA strands of the double-stranded RNA genome to single-stranded plus RNA, which is our mRNA, right? The boxed green RNA strand that is always going to be our mRNA if you've noticed throughout this video and that is going to go on to make our viral protein or our virion. So in addition to this, uh, this single-stranded plus RNA can also act as a template to make the negative RNA strand. So for that strand synthesis, that's going to basically convert us back to our double-stranded RNA genome. So we've duplicated our genome now, and that is for, that's going to go off for packaging. So one thing I want you to know is when we're using this plus single-stranded RNA as our um, template for the negative strand, that negative strand intermediate is called our anti-genome. Okay, moving on to group four. This is the positive single-stranded RNA genome. So with this one, um, the positive RNA genome is, because it's already single-stranded, it's basically an mRNA. So it can be translated directly into proteins by the host's ribosomes. So the genome of a positive single-stranded RNA virus is actually very infectious when um, introduced into the host. Uh, so I want you to look at figure B there. There's an example and it says Corona Viridae. That might sound a bit familiar to those watching this through the pandemic, but 
so this is technically very infectious because it can be translated directly into proteins. So uh, as you can see, our starting group or our starting product there, it's already boxed that genome because it's basically mRNA that can go off and be our viral protein immediately. Um, so also what happens here when we want to duplicate is that the negative RNA strand is generated by the virally encoded RDRP and then copied back into the plus strand so that can go off for encapsidation. Moving on to group 5, this is the negative single-stranded RNA genome. So this is um, negative, so what happens is that it must first be copied to make the positive strand so that we can get our mRNA. So that is the boxed one, that's mRNA, which is once again going to go off to that's going to be our virion or the viral protein. And the other objective we set of the virus is to uh, duplicate the genome. So uh, basically this um, genome is making, it's the template to make our positive strand, which we've done. And that can be in turn copied to make our negative strand. So we've duplicated it and that is sent off for encapsidation. So in this case, we have the RDRP working because we're going from RNA template to an mRNA when we were uh, starting off. So the RDRP is working here because we're going from RNA to RNA. We're not switching back and forth between RNA and DNA. Okay, moving on to our last RNA genome type. This is group six. This is the plus single-stranded RNA with a double-stranded DNA intermediate. So basically um, what we're dealing with here is we're starting with RNA and we're going to DNA. So the polymerase that we're using is going to be reverse transcriptase. It's the RNA-dependent DNA polymerase because we're going from RNA going back to DNA. So reverse transcriptase does that. So Basically, um, the RNA genome, our single strand, is converted to double-stranded DNA. So it's converted into this double-stranded DNA intermediate through the, retro, uh, the reverse transcriptase. And this uh, double-stranded DNA is going to become integrated into the host genome. And this is going to serve as the template to then produce the mRNA, which we've seen before. We know that double-stranded DNA, we can get an mRNA from that. Um, so that's going to go off to be our viral protein. And then we can produce an, a single-stranded RNA, which is basically the same thing as mRNA. They're the same thing. Um, and this is to duplicate the original genome because we want to always get back to what the original was. So we duplicate that and that's going to be for sent off for encapsidation. Okay, so that is the end of this video. Um, we've gone through groups one through seven of the Baltimore scheme and their details and the different types of polymerases used. So hopefully that covers all that you need for this topic in your viral virology classes. So be sure to subscribe to this channel and like this video and comment if you have any questions concerning this material. Uh, also, feel free to comment with any other topics you would like Brain Boost to make a video on, and we will have that up for you.